In this lesson, I want to look at the development environment we're going to be using throughout this course. Now, if you're new to PHP and MySQL, I do highly recommend that you follow along and use code anywhere. If you are familiar with PHP and MySQL, and you obviously have your own coding environment, then please just carry on using that as normal. Now, Code Anywhere is free, and if you've not used it before, it might be worth having a look. If you go to codeanywhere.com, on the right hand side, you'll see the sign up button. Just click on that, it will bring you to this form here, and you simply enter an email address and a password. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, you can actually use Gmail or Bitbucket, GitHub, or even Facebook if you wish. Now, once you have registered, you will receive an email from them. You'll have to confirm your email address. And then what will happen, you'll get to a screen similar to this. Now, what you might see, let me just uh, do this. You might actually see the following. So you'll actually see this screen here, which is the connection wizard. And again, if you don't see that, you can do what I just did there. Go to File, New Connection, and Container. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to set up the server. Now, Code Anywhere, they call them containers. We can refer to it as our own server. And the first thing we need to do is to give the server a name. I'm going to call mine the name of the course. You can call yours whatever you wish. The most important thing, though, is to select the right stack. I'm going to choose PHP, so I'll scroll down until I get to PHP. There are three variants here, and it's this one here that I'm interested in. It's the Ubuntu one. Now, make sure you do select the correct stack. I would say that 99% of the issues uh, throughout my courses and with face-to-face -face students is that they don't select the correct stack. So once again, please ensure you select the correct stack, PHP, Ubuntu. In this case, it's 14.04, but that actually might change. You then click on Create. You'll then get a little pop-up message, and it'll say it takes about two or three minutes for the server to actually be created. Now you can close that pop-up box. You'll know that the server is actually ready because what you'll see are two tabs appearing on the screen. I'm just gonna go ahead and open those. My server's already created. The first one is this information tab. Now there's one thing we do need from this, and that's this link here. When I click on that link, you can see it actually shows me the index of the server. I'd highly recommend that you actually bookmark that page because you are going to be using that quite a lot. I can actually go ahead and close that. The second tab is the root access to the server. I don't need that, so I'm going to close that tab again. Now you can see on the left-hand panel here, this is uh, my uh, tree directory, and I've got two actual containers here, two servers. The first one is from my other course, PHP for Beginners. And the reason I'm showing this, it says stopped. Now, when you log off of code anywhere, your server will go to sleep and you'll have to restart it when you do log back in again, which can take about 20 or 30 seconds or so. Now, here's my server that I've just created. I can right click and I get a contextual menu. I'll run through a few of these things in here, not all of them. Uh, the first one, the, the terminal window, that's the one that was open when you first start the server. Don't need that, so I'll close that. We can turn the server on and off and indeed restart it, so they might be handy. And this one here, my server is always on. Now that is a paid for service. I don't recommend you do that just for the sake of this course. Uh, it is fairly cheap for the year, but it's just not worth it. You can wait 20 or 30 seconds and the server will be on. Info is just that info tab that was open earlier. Might be handy, as I say, if you need that link again. And we then have a configuration, that's a, a JSON file. We, we don't actually need to go into there. I'll show you another way of changing a few things. We don't need to create a custom stack. We can rename the uh, server, that might come in handy. The next one is run. So if you want to get back to this tab here, this uh, preview of the server, you can just click on run. Refresh will refresh the files and folders. Um, and the two probably most important ones here, create file and create folder. 
we'll be doing a lot of that. We can download files from the server and indeed upload files, and that might be handy for you. I share all my code in Udemy, so anything I do on these courses, if you want to grab those files, you can upload them to your server and actually use them. This one here might come in handy. If you're having issues with your code and you want to share it with me, click on share, put my email address in, and you can actually share that directory with me. I can pop in, have a look at your code, and try and fix things. And the one to avoid is obviously destroy. You don't want to destroy your server. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is to right click. I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call this section one. And one thing I always say to my face to face students is you do need to be organized. So organize your folders, organize your files so they're nice and easy to find. And indeed, I'd recommend following the naming convention that I'm using here. Next thing is in section one, I want to create a file. I'm going to call this file just test.php. I'm just going to test that everything is actually working. Now, when I create a file, I get a new tab across here, and I can have several tabs going across the top here. So in this tab, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a PHP tag. I'm going to echo and obviously echo the obligatory hello world. Now, if you notice this little red, this little dot here, rather not red dot, the little gray dot, that's indicating this file has not yet saved. Now it has saved. I've got auto save actually turned on as one of my preferences. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But for you, you'll have to press Command S or Control S to save. And once you've saved, you can go up to here, go to your index and refresh. There's section one, into section one, and there's that test file. Click on that and we do get hello world. So everything is working fine. Now I did mention that auto save. In preferences, go to user, go to general, and we get a whole list of options here. Scroll down a little bit until you get to the editor. And down here, we've got auto save. Now, if it's on the left hand side, the left hand side of that slider, it is off. Click for the right, it is now turned on. I'll just cancel that because mine's on already. Okay, so that's the server setup. There are various options you may want to have a little play with. To be honest, I don't tend to go into most things here. We can now actually create a server. You know how to create a folder. You know how to create a file. And you know how to actually write a little bit of code showing on the tabs, how to save it, and then how to actually view it. If you have any questions, feel free to either send me a private message or preferably ask them in the Q&A section so other students can actually see them.